In the last video we learned how to define images with mathematics in Blender. We created this node that takes in a x and a y coordinate and it will draw a 2D point at this position on our screen. In this video we will use this node to draw points on our screen that are actually 3D. For example we can set a camera position to move around in 3D space. Again this all happens on a flat 2D plane so we basically create our own small render engine from scratch. So let's quickly look at how a pinhole camera works. We have a box here with a window and these three objects here, let's imagine they are light sources. And each of these light sources is emitting light in all directions, but we are only interested in the light rays that enter the box. Now when we make the opening of the box smaller, we limit the possible directions from which light can enter. And if we make it even smaller, we produce a quite sharp image here at the back. So we also have the same three points as on the right side. So we captured an image on this plane, but it's upside down. The image plane is the part that receives the light and in a real camera this would be the light sensitive film or sensor. The point of convergence is basically the point from which this specific perspective was taken. So the image plane just captures this image and we can move it back and forth by changing the focal length to control the zoom of our camera system. And because we built a virtual camera, we can also move the image plane in front of the point of convergence, so we don't get an upside down image. Now let's look at this in 3D. So here we have our point of convergence and the image plane is in front of it. And we have the point P here, which is some point in 3D space defined with X, Y and Z coordinates. And we want to project this point onto our image plane through the point of convergence. And what we want to calculate is the X1 and Y1, these distances here. So we went from 3D coordinates X, Y, Z to 2D coordinates X and Y. And once we have these two, we can feed this into our node, which will draw a point for us on the screen at this location. So the image plane is basically our screen. So how do we get these values? Let's only look at one value, x1. And if we look at this in 2D from the top, we have two triangles here. They have the same proportions, but are at a different scale. So the ratio between x1 and the focal length, this triangle, is the same as the ratio between the x and the z coordinate, this larger triangle here. And we can solve for x1 by multiplying by the focal length. And if we say the focal length is the value 1, we can just leave this out. So we just have to divide the x coordinate by the distance how far the point P is away from the image plane on the z axis. And this makes a lot of sense intuitively. If the point is really far away from the camera, so the z value is really high, the whole fraction here becomes really small. So the point on our screen moves more and more towards the center. So objects far away converge to a vanishing point. Okay, let's implement this in Blender. Place a separate XYZ node. And here we can enter three numbers, the three coordinates of our vector X, Y and Z, and we can access them right here. So all we want to do in this video is convert the 3D coordinates into 2D coordinates. We just have to recreate this formula with math nodes. So we need to divide the X coordinate by the Z coordinate. We can also divide the Y coordinate by Z. If we divide a value by the Z component, we basically make it dependent on how far it is away from the camera. So we can also do this for the radius, which should also change by distance. So we can enter the radius here, 0 0.05 works fine for me, and we also divide it by Z. Okay, so let's try this out. If we change the Z value, so we move the point first away from the camera, the point converges to the center and the size also changes. In Blender we can just group this and let's call this node point 3D. And if we go into the node group we can also set an input. So this node now takes in 3D coordinates and it will draw them on our 2D screen. 
We can add more points by just adding them with a math node. Okay, so I entered all the coordinates for all eight points and I then added them all together. So this is the final image here. Okay, now how do we move the camera around? The trick is instead of moving the camera, we leave it stationary and just move the points. For example, if we move forward, it looks the same as if we just move the points closer to the camera. We have to do the inverse. Okay, so here we project the point onto the screen and we want to do all the rotation and movement before that. So we can use a vector math node. If we want to go forward, we don't want to add a value, we want to subtract a value. This vector here is basically just our camera position. This is where the point of convergence is in 3D space. And by changing the coordinates we can move around, just like in a video game. Okay, let's try to control the focal length of our camera system. If we look to our formula from before, we can see that we have to just multiply by the focal length. If we do this, it works great, but we can do the same by just dividing the z-coordinate by our focal length. Okay, so as a quick recap, let's talk about what we did in this video. So here as an input to this node group, we get 3D coordinates that are in world space. This is just the position where they are in 3D. Then here we convert them to the camera's own coordinate system. We set them relative to the camera. And here we project this point from 3D space onto the screen. So this here is the so-called screen space. And then we actually draw the circle in 2D.